Are you ready for this? Because I don't even think I'm ready for this. This might be the hottest Android battle ever in Phone Dog's history. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron Baker from Phone Dog, and I've got in my hands the HTC One and the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, two of the hottest Android phones ever created. Which one's gonna come out on top? It's part one of a dogfight battle between a metal device and a device with awesome software value adds, an S Pen, and a big display. Let's go figure out which one deserves the dogfight gold medal. These dogfight battles in 2013 are getting harder and harder, and the reason why is because this year especially, it's all about you. It's all about how you personalize your device. It's all about what you want because there are so many options available on the market. You want metal and a beautiful build quality? HTC One is going to be your device. You want the S Pen functionality and the ability to draw on everything and really have kind of a tablet and a smartphone all in one? The Note 2 is going to be your device, or perhaps the LG Optimus G Pro when it comes to the States. There's something to like in both of these devices, but you know where it really gets hard is in a dogfight battle. We've got to pick one and declare it the winner. So this might be the hardest dogfight battle I have ever done, my friends. It's the HTC One going up against the Samsung Galaxy. Galaxy Note 2, an incredible device that's done incredibly well in Phone Dog's official smartphone rankings. It's been first place on the People's Choice chart and then the Experts chart. It is certainly a well liked device. Then you have the HTC One, and Early Buzz says a ton of great things about this device. The reviewers seem to love it, the people seem to love it, they're excited about that metal, and it's a change for HTC in a time where they really need to change or they're going to risk. Failing. I mean, frankly, really, if you want to put it that way, they're going to risk failing. They've got a great option here as well when it comes to carriers in the States. They've already announced availability, upcoming availability with AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile. Over here, you've got existing availability on AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon. So you get that all-important Verizon over on the Note 2 mix. But let's get into that in just a minute. We'll talk about specs. But before I dive too far into specs, going to give some love to our buddies at Best Buy Mobile because they give us devices like this for use in our One Paw Bandit game, which we turn around and give to you for free at instantwin.phonedog.com. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these devices, they're going to help you make an unbiased choice just like we do over here at the Dog Fights and at phonedog.com. At Best Buy mobile they're unbiased they'll help you choose what works best for you your family and your mobile lifestyle let's take a look one x or excuse me htc one i carried the one x for 30 days so i'm probably still going to call it the one x a couple of times but beautiful device here the build quality is incredible i've talked about this i'm currently carrying this as a 30-day challenge device and i'm really loving the build quality i mean this thing just feels incredible in the hand you know i found that a lot of android people they really want that iphone look and feel but they want a powerful android phone because they don't care for ios they want Android 4.1, 4.2, whatever the case may be, the latest version of Android. They want something that's powerful and they want something that's metal. And you know, the question's always been, why can't I get an Android device that looks like the iPhone? Well, if that's you or that's ever been you, this is your device right here. Not only is it beautiful, it's metal, it's got glass in the front, it's gorgeous, and it packs a 1.7 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 600 CPU, a 4.7 inch 1080p HD display. So a little bit on the smaller side, comparatively speaking, with the display, but it's a 1080p HD display. It's got a four ultra pixel camera, which we'll talk about a little bit more later in this part of the dogfight and in part two, because don't let it fool you. It's not four megapixels, it's four ultra pixels, and it's an incredible camera all around. So don't let you think or don't let yourself think that because this is four ultra pixels and this is eight megapixels, this is better or something on the market maybe with even 12 megapixels is better. We'll talk about it more a little bit later in the review. But beautiful build quality here. Android 4.1 with the newest version of Sense, HTC Sense version 5, a new font. It's got, of course, in the U.S., this is the international version, so it's got HSPA Plus capabilities, but the LTE version will be coming very soon to AT&T, Sprint, and actually T-Mobile as well. So Android 4.1, a beautiful device all around. Speakers on the front, it's HTC Boom Sound. They move the speakers to the front, and I'll tell you, this thing is incredibly, incredibly loud all around. So really a beautiful device with a 2,300 milliamp hour non-removable battery. Then you got this device. I've been carrying this device as my personal device. When I'm not running challenges, this is my go-to device. It has been for four months or so. And I before that, I was carrying the Galaxy S3. So I really think there's a lot to offer with TouchWiz, but particularly so with the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. This thing specs-wise, 1.6 gigahertz quad-core Exynos processor. It's got a 5.5-inch Super AMOLED HD display. It's not full HD, though. It's only 720p. 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD recording. It's got a 3,100 milliamp hour battery. 
It's got Android 4.1 with TouchWiz, and it's got 4G LTE connectivity. This is a branded version. This is the Verizon version. This is an unlocked international HTC One. So you can already see some patterns emerge here depending on your personal use case. And I can already say, you know what? If you're this person or this person, just go ahead and turn the dogfight off. If you're a road warrior, you need the battery life. That's all that matters to you. It's going to be the Note 2 because the 3,100 milliamp hour battery bests almost anything I've ever tested on the market. The Droid Razor Max HD, the Droid Razor Max before the HD version, and this are the three best devices I've ever tested from a battery perspective. This thing lasts for me with heavy use. I can make it about a day and a half with this device, and it's the first cell phone I've had in a long time where I don't have to worry about charging. So obviously, back to what I was saying at the beginning, it's all about what you need in a device. Battery life, it's gonna be this one. Build quality, it's gonna be that one. If you're still undecided after that, Let's move forward in the dogfight and see what comes in out of the box. So you can see HTC Sense 5 is dramatically different, at least in my opinion, dramatically different from previous builds of HTC Sense. HTC has really worked hard to simplify the Android experience based on some research that they've found, you know, that people don't use a whole lot of widgets. People don't use a whole lot of home screens. We're in the minority, friends. If you use more than about three home screens, you're in the minority, as am I. Actually, I only use about two home screens myself. Uh, on a regular basis. So you can have up to five, and what you're seeing right here, if you haven't watched the reviews, is HTC Blink Feed. It's one of their new things that comes with HTC Sense version five. It's kind of like Flipboard, but it's an HTC custom solution. So when you pull this out of the box, this is what you're gonna see. Blink Feed, which is kind of an aggregate software where you can go in, you can see your Facebook, your Twitter, your news, all at a glance when you're you know, getting on the train or getting in the cab or whatever the case may be, boarding the plane. You can quickly see your Facebook updates without having to go into the individual applications. And then when you want to, you can click on Associated Press, for example, and it'll bring it right up. So you can change around and customize this feed as you see fit. You can add, of course, your Facebook and Twitter. I can go to Topics and Services and add a bunch of different options, Lifestyle, Music, Sports, Technology, Games, and I can go through Categories and add Categories as well. You can see I have Business and Politics, two of my favorite things when I'm not on camera. Uh, I have those added to my Blink feed. Then over here, you'll see you've got your tr traditional home screen. Say that three times fast. Traditional home screen layout. So you know what? You turn it on, you think Blink feed's crap. You don't want Blink feed. You can come over here to your traditional home screens, and you've got four of those to total five, including the Blink feed area. So five home screens. You can, of course, set this as your home by pressing, and you can see that I've got this set as my home screen, and I've got four other alternatives there to total five. Now there are a couple of quirks here. Just gonna go over these really briefly. I talked about these in the review. If you wanna get rid of the stuff in the notifications or the, uh, the bar down here at the bottom, the home area, uh, with your shortcuts, you gotta do it in the menu. So see how, for example, I remove Chrome, I'll bring it back up here. You gotta do it right here. If you do it on the actual home screen itself, it just replicates the icon over and over again. It took me the longest time to figure that out. So there are some quirks where I'm like, eh, this is supposed to be easy, but it actually seems a little bit harder for the consumer. But you can see HTC Sense 5, running a top Android 4.1, a new notifications bar, and just in general, a new font as well. It's called Roboto, but this thing is fast, incredibly fast all around. The Snapdragon 600 CPU, much like the S4, incredibly impressed with the performance of the processor. I've always liked Exynos as well, and this one does an incredible job all around quad core, and the display isn't as vibrant because it is a 720p HD display, but you do get the Verizon stuff out of the box right here. You get, of course, Google Plus integration, but then you get Audible, Amazon Kindle, Amazon, you get my uh, mobile hotspot, NFL mobile, my Verizon mobile, and then you get Visual Voicemail, VZ Navigator, both of which are additional fees to use. Viewdini as well, and unfortunately none of that can be uninstalled. But this thing is incredibly fast also, and you're going to see in Quadrant Standard which one comes out on top, so I don't want to spoil the fun for part two, but what I'm saying here, they're both incredibly fast. So this, quad-core Exynos, 1.6 gigahertz, quad-core Snapdragon 600, 1.7 gigahertz. They're both insanely fast in day-to-day -day performance. And I like a lot of the Samsung value ads. I'm gonna talk extensively about this in part two because you know we're talking more about hardware and kind of hardware specs this time around. Part two is really gonna be focused on software because I think in 2013, it's all about the software. Because honestly, these all have quad-core processors. Both of these have two gigabytes of RAM. Both of these have nice cameras. Both of these, at least when this comes to the States, will have 4G LTE capabilities. It really boils down to the overall software experience. And I think that's what HTC is starting to get with Blink Feed and some of these kind of value-added applications where it's like, you know what, I'm gonna spend some money on a smartphone. I want some either some hardware or some software that makes it look like or feel or look like I'm spending $199 or even more. Or 249 or 299 as may be the case on the Note 2. So just highlighting some of the Note 2 features that I absolutely love. We can go in here and take a look at the settings. This thing is chock full of software value adds. Home screen mode is one of my favorites. If you're moving somebody over that has a hard time seeing, you can switch from standard mode to starter mode, really provide an easy experience until they're comfortable 
with Android, of course. You get the shortcuts as well up here at the top, so those are easy to access. And then you've got display, and I wanna show you a couple of these things here. We're going to display, and I have these two features I really enjoy. Smart rotation is one of them, so if you're ever laying in bed, you know, you lay down to read something and your screen flips like that and it gets really annoying. Smart rotation, when it sees your eyes staying on the portrait, and I'm gonna to try to do it here from behind the camera so you can see. And you can see that that little icon lit up and it knows that my eyes were watching so it didn't move. Smart stay is another good one. It stays on as long as you're looking at it. And we see a ton of this stuff coming with the Samsung Galaxy S4 and it's rumored that the Note 2 and the Galaxy S3 will get some of those updates as well. So if you like what you saw in the Galaxy S4 but don't wanna spend the money or don't wanna wait, maybe you need your upgrade right now, this is a great alternative to the Galaxy S4 and it has the S Pen functionality. Now this thing, once you pull this out, and we're gonna talk about this in part two, there is a ton of stuff you can do with this S Pen. On that note, it's time to sign off because part one is getting a little bit too long. Stay tuned for part two. I will talk about the S Pen on the Note 2, what makes the software so great. We'll come over here and focus on HTC Zoe, some of HTC's new camera features, and some of the software goodies that you get over on the Sense 5 side as well. So you're going to want to stay tuned to part two.